welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name's Kevin Smith. Good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Today's question comes from Jonathan Andrews. Jonathan wants to know, Jesus was baptized too, right? Why would he need to get baptized if he was the one dying for us? Jonathan, this is a great question and one that we do need to consider. Uh, it's one that's often avoided or just kind of neglected for lack of a better explanation uh, within the church and within Christendom uh, as a whole. Um, let's take a look at one of the baptism accounts. Uh, we're going to look at the one in Matthew. It gives us uh, quite a bit of detail. Uh, so let's look at Matthew chapter 3, but before we get to the baptismal account of Jesus, let's back up just a hair and look at verses 11 and 12. Let's read together. As for me, I baptize you with what? For repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you. You with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What we know from Mark chapter 1, verse 4, is that John was preaching about repentance and baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. That's what Mark 1, 4 says. Um, so we know that John the Baptist, from what we read in Matthew just now and other places as well, that John the Baptist had been preaching that the Messiah was coming. And you know, here he, he tells the people that compared to the Messiah, he isn't even worthy to tie the Messiah's sandals. Uh, you know, that the Messiah is so far above him that, uh, well, John couldn't even do the lowliest of slaves job. Um, but what John also says is that there is going to be a shift that the Messiah has so much authority that um, he's going to sift things out. There's also going to be a, a shift in baptism. You know, we know that John was baptizing in water, and we see that, but what the Messiah was going to do, according to John the Baptist, was baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. On the day of Pentecost, we see the tongues of fire coming down on the apostles as they uh, are supposed to begin preaching. Um, so what John the Baptist is saying is there's going to be a shift in that, okay? So let's re keep reading in Matthew chapter 3, and this time we're going to read verses 13 through 17. Let's read together. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay, so the first thing we want to notice is that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only given to a select few. Uh, kings, prophets, uh, people selected by God to do a specific job. Uh, sometimes it was a workman for the temple and, and the tabernacle, things like that. Uh, so what is going on here, the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus after the baptism 
in many ways, what God is saying is, that one, that one's mine. That's my chosen messenger. You know, um, because the Holy Spirit descends on him where not even the Pharisees, in many cases, would have received the Spirit of God. Now, also, what we see is the Father identifies Jesus as his son. So he is telling everybody there, this is not a, a hidden thing. This is in the Jordan River. So it's very public. He is telling everyone there that that Messiah, that one that just got baptized, immersed, that one's my messenger, but also that one's my son. So he identifies Jesus from the very beginning Jesus did not identify himself and say, yes, I am God's son here. He doesn't do that until late in the ministry um, in Luke 22, you know, using those words. Um, now, there are other things he does and, and other phrasing he uses that says, I am God's son. But the father is the first to identify him as his son. But let's take a look at this fitting to fulfill all righteousness. There are two words in this passage that we need to take a look at in the Greek. Uh, the first one is prepon from prepo. Uh, it means be fitting, be seemly, be suitable. The second one is plerosai from pleuroo which means to make full or to fulfill. Jesus is setting an example here for his followers to come. You know, it, it's one of those things that he, in a sense, says, I'm doing this to show them what needs to be done. This is how you fulfill all righteousness. This is how you get into a right relationship with God. Now, Jonathan, there may be other reasons for Jesus' baptism. Um, but to be honest, we're not given a whole lot of information as to why Jesus chose to do this. We know that there were a lot of ceremonial cleansings that the Jews did uh, to show uh, moral purity, to show cleanliness before God. Maybe Jesus was choosing to, to do that as as well to show the people there that yes I am clean I am innocent um, but we really don't have a whole lot of information hopefully that the answers that I gave you from these two passages will help to um, at least further your study and shed a little bit of light on this as well so I have a question for you why did you choose to be immersed was it to obey was it for forgiveness of sins some combination of the two uh, or if you have not been immersed why have you chosen not to uh, follow this example that Jesus set for us leave me a comment in the section below don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on questions over coffee thank you for our time together today I look forward to the next time Keep pressing forward.